So you're wondering what it's like to be a structural engineer. And this is just a day in my life. My name's Brendan. I'm a structural engineer based in Australia with over 15 years experience. And basically I design buildings to stand up, whether that be under lateral or gravity forces. So I start my day off around 7 a.m where I make the kids breakfast, then I get on my bike and travel along the beautiful Yarra River into sunny Melbourne. Obviously just getting in the office around 8.30, 9 o'clock. About to start the day, so let's get into it and see what happens. Generally, I start my day by opening up my emails, putting a plan together of what needs to be done, and potentially even some writing of reports. I generally like writing reports early in the day, as it allows me to check them in the afternoon when I've cleared my head to ensure that I'm happy with what's been written. So the first task of the day is a stability assessment, where I'll be modeling a building in ETABS. ETABS is a 3D modeling software that allows us to assess the structure for both gravity and lateral forces. The lateral forces can consist of either wind or earthquake. As you can see here, it also allows us to assess the modal behavior of the structure to see how it behaves under a dynamic action. A lot of my day is also made up with mentoring junior colleagues, so going through some design philosophies, updating them with the newest codes, so the actual changes that have happened. I'm not sure if you know what's happening in Australia, but there's been some major changes to the codes recently, which everyone has to adopt. So everyone has to know that what the changes are happening. I'm just going through with some of the junior staff what those changes are. We also have discussions around their design and design philosophies and any other questions they may have. This is one of the most favorite things about my career. As mentoring colleagues and discussing design approaches, it allows me to see other people's point of view about how they approach designs and how they think about designing buildings. So it not only helps me challenge my ideas about how I approach design, but also consolidates my understanding of engineering. As not only do I have to think it down to the basics about how design's put together, but if I'm able to explain it to them, gives confidence in me that I know what I'm doing as well. So it's a win-win here. So we're not only increasing the productivity of the junior staff, but also helping me out as well. I encourage everyone to have discussions with the colleagues around them, even early on in their career. It allows you to work out where your strengths lie and what you need to work on. So it not only helps the people around you, but also helps your career in the long run. As you can see, we're just going for a quick walk down on South Bank for my lunch break and to get out of the office. And this afternoon, I'll be going through some design works. So I'll be assessing some structural designs, doing some assessments on gravity loads and maybe even some stability systems. And then I've also got a meeting at 6 p.m., which you may be able to see with my international colleagues. So the typical day is lots of meetings, lots of design work. Currently in the office all day, so I'm not actually meeting any or architects at the moment because of the stages that my projects are in, but that's where we're currently sitting. In the afternoon, I'm on a couple of team meetings. As I'm currently on a couple of interstate projects in both Perth, Sydney and Canberra, I'll be quite regularly discussing with interstate colleagues over teams about design changes and design approaches. Even up until recently, the local projects I was working for in Melbourne were also over teams due to the restrictions we were placed under under COVID. Now a lot of those restrictions are currently being lifted and that we can currently go into the office. A lot of those local team meetings are now being undertaken in person. So just back to some stability modeling, if you saw the model earlier, 
So I'm just designing the wall to resist the lateral force from wind and earthquake by sizing up the reinforcement that needs to go in the wall to resist those lateral actions. Concrete is essentially good under compression forces, but weak under tension. So it needs steel reinforcement inside the wall to resist those tension forces, Now later in the day, we're back into analysis again. So I'm analyzing a still stair that we can see this output from space gas. And it's quite a high stair, it's about 10 to 12 meters tall with a couple of landings in it as well. And later in the day, we've got some quite complex FE analysis. So finite element analysis. I'm actually doing this in strand to analyze a giant transfer structure, analyzing both where the shear force is going and the tension forces are going. From this animated pitch, you can see as the load increases, the tension tie at the bottom increases as well. And I'm using this detailed software to try and get a more efficient design as the load's spreading around a quite a complex structure. Now, I don't solely rely on putting the outputs out here. I also do hand comps to verify the results I'm getting. So a finite element model allows me to more accurately assess the structural mechanics and how the forces are flowing through a design. This is provided that I've modeled the structure correctly. So as you can see from today, I've used quite a lot of software packages for my different designs using both Strand, ETABS and SpaceGas. And depending on what I'm designing, will dictate what software I'm going to use as all these different packages have different benefits and negatives. So it's really about picking the best software for what my design approach dictates. So we're just having a meeting later in the day with an international colleague based in the UK. This is where we need to juggle time zones to make meetings that are appropriate for both of us. As you can see as an engineer, you can work both across interstate and international borders. So engineering is really clear that can take you anywhere where you want to go. So I'm just finishing up for the day, it's about 6.30. As you can see, most people have already left. And if you do like this content, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you are interested in structural engineering, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get all the updates you need to ping the bell. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.